All right, probably going to be a long video, response video to Corey Anton. Yep, 20 minutes of video or such, and it's going to take a while because he says a lot of things and he talks fast, and yeah, but it's all this same old cliche kind of stuff, and yeah, this conversation has to take place. I mean, we're obviously not understanding each other at all. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm going to do a quick little follow-up from the video I shot a couple days ago, and I want to talk more about the gift character. When a gift her of life or of existence. Um, yeah, well, this whole idea of even changing gift into a metaphor or imposition into a metaphor, these aren't metaphor words, okay? They're not. They're, they're explicit descriptors. Um, so maybe we should describe what uh, explicitly, what, what a gift is. Can a gift be um, a four-year-old fruitcake I take out of my freezer and I put really fancy wrapping paper on it and I give it to somebody? Is that a gift? Come on, what is a gift? When I talked about the limitations of metaphor and was suggesting that the the metaphors that we use from life or from existence and when we Yeah, again, like I said, these aren't metaphors though. Gift is not a metaphor. Imposition is certainly not a metaphor. We try to understand the whole of life or the whole of existence. Those metaphors always fall short. And I was suggesting... Uh, no. See, that's the whole point. The whole argument. The whole of existence. What does that mean? Yeah, of course. You value your life based on the whole thing. And none of you people talking. None of this conversation taking place between any of these people. We're all people who haven't even died yet. You haven't faced being an old person. You haven't faced being in a nursing home. You haven't faced Alzheimer's. You haven't faced cancer. You haven't faced the worst of life. We gotta concede, okay? The end is generally the worst of life. Most people aren't lucky. They don't die in their sleep, or they don't drop dead of a massive heart attack. Most people die slow and hard. Um, so yeah, you gotta do the whole thing. You gotta take the whole big, long, um, whatever it is, the whole game, and judge it, okay? How much fun is it to watch your child die? All right, my parents had to watch one of theirs die. It wasn't any fucking goddamn fun that again you can compare two things within life or within existence but when you try to compare something to life or existence it it ends up hiding more than it highlights and yeah whatever so you just said absolutely nothing there no we can judge everything of course you can't judge a car like you judge a goldfish you don't judge everything the same you don't judge different things the same way but you judge them all based on some sort of economy standard based on some sort of value the thing you want the thing to accomplish so yeah dishwashers you judge it based on how well it washes dishes Ugh. human beings you judge them based on what they do with this sentience thing do they efficiently, functionally use it? Do they accomplish something with it? Or do they just, as I've analogized, as I've metaphored, do they behave just like um, 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 essentially firemen who start fires to justify their own existence? To say, look, I put the fire out. Because, yeah, I started it, but I put it out. I used some different examples in there, including the example of gift, where if someone wants to say that life is a gift, uh, that's just a partial representation of some aspects of life, not a total, you know, it doesn't, doesn't accurately sum up. Well, I know, but then what's the point, all right? And what are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about what the life is for the person who's living it, the person who's been the beneficiary of the gift? Or are we going to talk about the person imposing the gift, giving the gift? There's two parts to that equation. So who are you talking about? The victim of the gift? are the, the, the imposer of the gift. Life, and I was comparing that to some other ones where, you know, life is a roller coaster, or I know in the antinatalist position, people have been saying that life is an imposition, or even, you know, life is gambling, or life is rape, and again, some of these were... Uh, yeah, well, you want to just throw them all into one pile, that's great, yeah, so that's just pigeonhole bullshit, so I'll just call you a religious wacko, and we'll end the conversation right there, because we'll just do this cliche bullshit. Um, yeah, but that's just nonsense, all right? So don't mix the metaphors. Some of the metaphors are exactly or right on point, okay? The metaphor of, uh, of we justifying our existence by essentially creating the criminal, and then we go out and catch the criminal. And now we're somehow we've justified our existence. That's a good metaphor. The drunk driver is kind of a good metaphor, okay? You go out and you, for your own um, comfort, for your own expedience, 
you take a gambling risk with somebody else's um, welfare for what their 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 welfare is now on the line because of a game you want to play because you just can't help rolling the damn dice. Uh, these these metaphors are, are perfectly um, functional and need um, addressing. And and so to throw them in and say, okay, it's like rape. Well, I don't know if it's exactly like rape. That's not my metaphor. So why don't you point your finger at somebody or at a conversation, okay? But this idea that you're going to throw every bad argument in with every good argument, and because there's bad ones that in there, there's bad apples in there, you're just going to say they're all bad apples? That's bullshit. And you goddamn know it's bullshit. I just thought highly problematic. <clears throat> I guess what I do want to do, though, is... I want to go back to this this argument, the larger argument, and I have so many videos on it that I, I sort of don't want to continue to belabor it, but I feel obligated. Yeah, you feel obligated to repeat exactly what you've said before, and you feel obligated to completely ignore the counter-arguments that have been provided. So, yeah, that's that isn't going to go anywhere. There is no conversation, there is no debate, there is no discussion. There is just a rearticulation by you that this used car you're trying to sell everybody on isn't a lemon and a piece of shit, okay? That its name is Henry, and if you look at the bumper just right, it's smiling, and it's a friendly little happy car. Well, fuck you. It's not. Life is a dangerous, messy, fucking goddamn business. To... To say a couple more words anyway about the gift character of life. I do think if you're going to use a metaphor, gift is the best metaphor. That life is. <laughs> well, like I said, gift is not a metaphor. In this circumstance, it's just not a metaphor. It's an explicit statement describing what life is. You're saying that life, like something you buy at a quality store, okay, a good product, okay, that has been fun that's functional. It's, it's not going to kill the person you're giving it to. It's not going to harm the person you're going to give it to. Come on, we know that most gifts are fail effing safe. Okay, they have that little UL symbol on it, right? You buy the gift and it has the UL symbol on it and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to burn down the person's house. It's not going to ruin them. And if it did, you wouldn't call it a damn gift, would you? So this is just a bullshit metaphor. There is no care taken in this production of life thing. There is no fail safe. There is very little it is exactly the opposite of a gift in terms of the proportions. Okay, there is no UL safety standard that's been met here. All right, so this is not a gift. This is a risk imposed. It's a gift. It is. Uh, the exi your, your existence, your very breath, the, the being that you take yourself to be is somehow a gift without a giver. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that just makes so much sense. Okay, fine, great. Rah, rah, rah. The home team is the best team, even if it doesn't win a game. Right? I mean, isn't that the same thing as saying even if there's not a giver, we'll just make some shit up? Okay, it's a gift, but, yeah, nature made it just right. Everything's just fine. No, we're not addicted. No, we're not just consuming and reproducing for just to, 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 to satisfy the functional purpose of a stupid molecule. No, we're accomplishing something. Why? Because we need to believe that. And you don't care about the fucking truth. You just lie. So the lie sounds better. The lie is more fun. So fuck the goddamn truth. So there's a metaphor for that. Okay? You're raping the fucking truth. And the truth has a little tiny, 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 tiny anus. All right, and so even with your little your little pencil dick, you're going to hurt the goddamn truth. You're going to violate it in a nasty, harsh way when you fuck it this way. And when I say it's a gift, I mean that you come to self-awareness realizing yourself as over here and the world is over there, and you're stuck with some relation to this thing called your life. And, I mean, not only is your life, quotes, a gift to you, but you well, 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 literally how, are a kind of gift. How does that even make? This is just such mush. I'm not, I'm not in gift wrapping. I'm not been UL approved. I was, it was, it was not something I wanted. The person purchasing it, it's like they gave me a Barbie doll. Or they gave me, um, you know, whatever. Uh, think of something preposterously stupid. Um... I don't know. What? Think of something preposterously stupid. 
that they gave me, all right, that I didn't fucking goddamn want, all right? They didn't shop for me. They just said, here, here's our shitty world. I've enjoyed it. You go ahead and enjoy it. Well, and I'm saying, well, no, this is completely the wrong planet for me. I have, I'm rational, okay? I can't find any excuse for this nonsense, all right? You, you, you retards find this useful? Well, then, yeah, you should have get fed me late lead paint. You want to give me a gift? Send me lead paint when I was five years old. That would have been a gift. Gift to yourself, that you emerge to yourself. Um, blah, blah, blah. In a thrown way. Um, out of existence. I mean, you sort of emerge out. And th the point of gift is that it it's not simply, you know, that it's, it's all a good thing and people love it and people are happy with it. I don't think that's the point at all. Yeah, yeah, right. So again, the metaphor is completely useless. It's not a metaphor in the first place. And any rational description of gift doesn't include a bunch of catches. So now if you're going to say, well, yeah, life does have catches, and yeah, life does have a mortgage, and yeah, life is a expired credit card, and life is blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're going to add all these catches, then your gift metaphor is broken. If, he, if your, your gift, uh, your misappropriation of the word gift as a metaphor, regardless, is broken. You can't apply it to this circumstance if you're going to start applying conditions. Point at all. The point is that people f feel thankful. They wake up in the morning, it's a sunny day, and they feel gratitude. They, they feel Oh, like well, they, again, yeah, and for, for every one of those, there's somebody else who wakes up and says, oh my God, I still got the headache. Or, oh, you know, oh, oh, you know well, well, let's not even go into all that. Oh, I got to get to work. Oh, I'm late. Oh, you know, the kid's sick, and I got to take him to the hospital. I'm going to miss work. I'm going to get my pay's going to get cut. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody's going to take my job. Come on. Sense of thanks. And when they do that, they're appreciative of their life. They're appreciative of all that they have. And it was from nothing, right? You, you started with nothing. And somehow now you have. A life that you're invested in. That you, you well, know, yeah, that you somehow, about. somehow. And, but again, that emerged from a kind of zero point. It and emerged from a zero point, but we know what it emerged from, okay? We know what the game is. It's the game that you won't pay any attention to. Consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, and addiction, addiction, addiction. And that's all you're describing here, okay? Yeah, we emerge into our addiction and our insatiable desire and our unrelenting need. Oh, and we just run, run, run after the little synthetic piece of cheese. Why? Because we're a fucking addicted. Yeah, so use the real word, and it doesn't sound like such a great thing anymore, does it? No. I think the, the point is that people, to the extent that they feel as if they've received something... They, you know, whatever that means, they feel an obligation to give back. And there's a <clears throat> oh, let's talk about how people think, not about how people feel. And we know that most people f talk that crap because they believe in God. And they don't want to offend God by saying, well, you know what, God, this really does kind of suck. They're afraid to say those words because they say, oh, I'm going to ruin my lottery ticket to hell, heaven. You know, um, the, the, the voodoo is going to scare them. They're scared to step on cracks. They're fucking superstitious assholes. And so you're gonna you're gonna sit there and take the 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 the, the um, testimony of superstitious retards, and you're gonna have a conversation with me and expect me to find that that has some meaning because superstitious retards will utter certain uh, mumbo jumbo, um, open sesame jargony voodoo-y words that I should somehow be impressed. No. Sorry. Meaning horizon that opens up from giving back. Right. If I and, and this is partly, you know, it is related to the history of sacrifice in, in human cultures. There's a long, you know, tons and tons of, of anthropological studies, tons oh, of, of well, historical wait. studies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about all the sacrifice and let's talk about all the uh, the other end of that. OK, all the graft, all the taking, all the stealing, all the exploitation, the 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 hundreds of years of taking grotesque exploitation. Again, you just keep painting this. You just this is just whitewash. This is just such a a, 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 a distortion of the truth, the truth you know. On 
the role of animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, and various ways that people try to make contributions to their world. Right? I mean, you've yeah, lots yeah, of right. Cases of yeah, yeah, right. By 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 sadistically harming another sentient creature. That's their sacrifice, right? Or throwing their daughter into a volcano. That's you're going to defend that kind of psychology as anything else but insane. Jesus. Who they feel good, quotes, giving back to their communities, to their worlds, to their Oh, families. you've said this now twice, this giving back crap. You know, people feel good because it, it makes them feel like they're productive because it's an ego thing, okay? If we can't be decisively the champion in some overt way, like I'm physically stronger or I'm prettier or I'm more articulate or I have more degrees on my wall or whatever the standard is. If they can't do it that way, then all they got left is being helpful in some way to somebody else to gain, you know, reward points, to gain their, their celebrity points in a way. It's the same kind of thing that people are feeding on. They're feeding on a need to be useful. And if they can't be useful just by being pretty or just being fun to look at or funny even, um, to being entertaining, being useful in some overt way, then the only other way they got to be useful is, okay, I'll wash your dishes, and okay, I'll you know, scrub your floors, and okay, I'll you know, stroke your penis. Ugh. But you know, let's not, again, engrandize these psychologies that human beings get trapped in. There are psychologies here. Come on, this isn't philosophy, this is psychology. And in giving back, some kind of meaning is accomplished, and I think what's interesting there is if you say give back, that does mean they somehow feel as if they've been given. Uh, yeah, well, again, how somehow feel. Again, what people somehow feel is kind of irrelevant to, to philosophy. So, again, just keep perverting philosophy into some this psycho babble bullshit. Okay, it's not about the truth, it's not about explicitly refining. Um, a, a concise, rational definition of exactly what life is and what we're participants in. No, don't describe the maze game for what it is. Whitewash the hell out of it until you can make it something that smells good, you know, put perfume on it, it's lipstick on a pig, professor, that's all you're doing. And you're saying that's what a, uh, an enlightened, high intelligence is going to do. It's just going to put lipstick on the pig. I mean, that's just an insult to our fucking intelligence. To do it right in the open like this, too. To do it so overtly. To sit there and put the lipstick on the pig right here in front of me. Right here in my... Right in front of me. And then say, aren't you fooled? Don't you want to have a relationship with the dear sweet pig? I mean, I put lipstick on it. It's got a pink dress on. You Aren't you fooled? No, I'm not fooled, professor. Much. That is their life feels to be a gift and so the gift character is a way that helps us try to make sense of it no no no, no. you're not trying to make sense of it you're trying to desense it you're trying to change it into something it's not so you can eat it so you can feel good about eating it so you can feel good about wallowing in it you're pretending the cesspool and the turds and the the crap that you're swimming in, you're just going to pretend it's chocolate and it's something else. And then that way you can swim in it. And that's all you're goddamn doing. Here's why I don't like the imposition argument. Okay, There's a great line from Nikon, or Nikon a Japanese school of psychotherapy. Uh, David K. Reynolds has done a lot of work with. But one of the, the great lines in Nikon is that the day you were born was the day your mother suffered. Oh, yeah, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Totally irrelevant to the fact that you are in the world, right? The day you were born is the day you're born. What your mother did is kind of irrelevant to your the fact that now you are a participant. Now you have a welfare, okay, period. Uh, that's the new game. I mean, so yeah, again, try to try to drag the mother into the fact of what an existence is. When you start to ask the question about imposition, who is it a greater imposition upon? The child or the parents? 
<clears throat> well, let's not talk about the child until we've described what the child is going to face in life. So, I mean, obviously, if the child has, you know, whatever, elephant man disease, whatever the technical name is, you know, has a bunch of tumors start growing in their fucking brain and their skull when they're seven years old, uh, then I guess the imposition is going to be felt by that child pretty damn hard. If they get leukemia when they're seven years old, that ain't going to be too sweet either. Uh, they're paralyzed in a peewee football game. That ain't going to be too fucking sweet either. So there's going to be lots of opportunity for imposition. But just to sit there and say child. No, it's a human being. All right? It's not going to be a child. It's going to be a fucking adult. And it's eventually going to be an old adult and die. It's inevitably going to die, whether it's old or young. It's going to die, Professor. So there's an imposition at minimum of death. Ugh. Now, you could say, well, it's, it's a greater on the child. But it's certainly, okay, and I'll, I'll grant that, let's just say that it is. But it's not. Well, then, well, let's, just, let's just agree on that, then. Let's just agree that it's an imposition on the child. All right, again, I'm not going to argue about the psychology of wacky women. All right, um, but, I mean, well, you're going to do it, so I guess I'm going to have to address it. But this is just so stupid. People do all kinds of wacky things for what look like to, to other people nonsensical victory, right? Um, you know, there's a guy to satisfy his sexual desire. He let a horse, you know, have sex with him and kill him. There's people who climb mountains, endure horrific hardship. Their, you know, their feet freeze off, all kinds of other bullshit, but they're obsessed with climbing the stupid mountain. Are you going to sit there and just rationalize all this behavior and just say, oh yeah, well that's just humans being human. That's just super. That's just fantastic. You're never going to be able to just honestly say, no, human beings get caught up in bizarre and silly psychology where they think they can't step on a goddamn crack in the sidewalk or, you know, their brain's going to explode or some other kind of bullshit. But it's a need game. So the fact that there are women who will endure this process, um, but it still has to do with what they're going to get out of it. I mean, if a rapist takes three years to plan his crime, three years of meticulous planning, she, he follows the girl around, he knows everything about her, everywhere she goes, just three years of meticulous work, does that make it an admirable thing? No, it doesn't. The fact that he's sacrificing doesn't have anything to do with whether it's a good or bad thing. If somebody saves for... 10 years, they work 10 extra hours a week for 10 years so they can buy themselves a Lamborghini. Are you going to call that a sacrifice? Are you going to call that some sort of magnificent um, example of human generosity? Or are you going to call it what it is? Fucked up psychology. Not an imposition, not, not an imposition upon the family. It seems to be a quite significant imposition upon those people. In fact, I mean, that's partly why many people choose abortion. They choose abortion because having a child would be too much of an imposition. Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I did. Too much of an imposition on them, too much of an inconvenience for them, and they might even realize that, yeah, their child isn't going to benefit from their parenthood. There are no capacity to take proper care of it. And so they make the rational choice and say, the hell with this. I can't even get my life to work right. Why the, how, why the fuck would I want some other life to mess with? Um, but again, again, and so again, you've, you, you, you twist this argument. Um, so exactly what's the male sacrifice? He doesn't go through pregnancy. He doesn't go through all that crap. Um, at worst, his, his uh, contribution is, is a, a financial one. All right, but we know that people will spend preposterous amounts of money on nonsense. So we, you can't use that as an argument that it's meritorious just because men are willing to spend money on it. Men will spend money on absolute garbage. Literally. And the, I think the inversion that has happened in some of this dialogue is so fascinating. I mean, it's, it's literally interesting. The fact that there are a good number of people in the antinatalist camp who want to claim that having children is selfish is so interesting. I mean, to the... Oh, really? I, I mean, maybe you would address it in some way. Just point me to the parents who had kids unselfishly. Would you please do that? Okay, and not, not adoptive parents. I'm not even going to say they're not unselfish because I think they are selfish. They want to have kids because they need something to satisfy their life. Okay, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're not doing it because they hear the universe saying it needs to be done. Um, 
But regardless, you point me to the natural birth parents that are, that are per perpetrating an act of, of generosity, where they've gone to the proper store and purchased the proper equipment and done it the proper way, and they're doing it because they know it's the right thing to do and has nothing to do with their self-interest. Oh, you won't be able to do that, Professor. So again, this is just, you, you've, you've tried here to manipulate you know, people's sensibilities and now make it ludicrous that somebody would think water's wet. I mean, that's how, that's how manipulative you are. You, you're trying to break the word wet and say, no, it's not real. You know, wet isn't wet. Come on, get serious. And water can be frozen and then it's not wet. Or it can be like dry, well, that dry ice isn't water. Um, but it can be in all kinds of different forms and other things can be, I mean, you're just playing the game with the fucking words. We know that people goddamn have kids for no goddamn rational reason. They have it for a personal reason. Bulk of popular American culture, popular U.S. culture, not having kids would be deemed the selfish act. I do. I think that's that's the way that most people would think about it. They would say, well, if you don't... Right, and that is completely idiotic, right? Now, can we concede that? Most people think, um, you know, angels exist. Most people think lots of wacky and stupid things. And most people okay, happen to be in that camp of reckless reproducers. So, of course, they're going to justify their own behavior. Of course they are, all right? But, of course, it is the right thing to do not to have the kid. And most, and probably most people will be able to say that if you're addicted to heroin and you have AIDS, uh, that it's probably the right thing to do not to have a child. I bet you most people will say that, Professor. You have kids. You don't have kids because you're selfish and you're worried about your own comforts, your own ease, providing just for yourself, whereas parenting oftentimes, especially someone who is going to be a good parent, it involves, for the mother, I mean, literally risking her life to give birth to that baby. Right, and mountain climbers risk their life to climb to the top of a stupid mountain for absolutely nothing. Right, so the fact that dopey women uh, will go through extraordinary crap all right, so they can sit there and justify their existence by having something to take care of for 18 years, uh, and many of them with the expectation that they will live vicariously through them. We see plenty of people doing that bullshit. We see plenty of little five-year-olds all dressed up and doing little beauty contests and everything else because of the mother's unsatisfied ambitions. Come on, professor. And then constant, round-the-clock feeding, there's... A you know, numerous demands upon the person. The, the, the baby could die. I mean, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of stress. And, you know... The yeah, well, it, it's a lot of stress if you, like, have a real expensive car. You know, you go out and get the Lamborghini. You got to buy a security system. And you got to maintain the thing. You got to keep it clean. You got to get that European mechanic to fix it. You got to do all the blah, 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 blah. Still bullshit, Professor. I mean, the fact that somebody sacrifices to do something stupid... The fact that they invest time planning their mass murder uh, really doesn't make it a legitimate act. You have to justify the act. You can't justify the act by saying, look at what they're willing to sacrifice to do it. No, that's not how you figure out whether something is done for good reasons or bad. That's not how you define altruism. There does seem to be, you know, hardship and loss and worry and financial demand and many people they, they devote their lives to trying to enable their children to thrive to have a successful life a meaningful life well 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 maybe we ought to that, survey that that maybe we ought to survey uh, you know the average high school student and find out what he thinks of his parents parenting capacities um, because this is all sort of bullshit, and you goddamn know it. I mean, most parents are pretty goddamn reckless. Um, and, and you know it. So this is just bullshit. And, you know, the, and, and if their kid doesn't come out right, and he doesn't sit there, he doesn't get uh, straight A's in school, and he's a little bit of a fuck-up, yeah, where's the parents then? Yeah, they, they write him off pretty damn quick. That having kids is somehow more selfish than not having kids. Now, we could try to... Well, I'm just saying, look, it's no point in comparing the two things because they're, one's based on a logical decision, one that's rational assessment of benefit and risk. The other one's completely irrational. Um, it has no rational component. Absolutely none. The only reason why it happens is because people need to do it. 
all right? Their ego needs it. There's no other reason for it to happen. There is nothing in the universe saying it needs to happen. It needs to happen. You got to do it. You got to do it. No, all the motivation is generated from inside of their fucking psychology.